I-16 Property Plant and Equipment De-recognition compensation from third parties I-16 paragraph 67 to 68 deals with de-recognition. The carrying amount of an item of PPE shall be de-recognized on disposal or when no future economic benefits are expected from its use or disposal. Paragraph 68, the gain or loss arising from the de-recognition shall be included in profit or loss when the item is de-recognized. I-17 will be dealt with at a later stage. I-16, paragraph 71, the gain or loss arising from the de-recognition shall be determined as the difference between the net disposal proceeds, if any, and the carrying amount of the item. An asset is de-recognized on disposal or when you don't expect any further economic benefits because you no longer meet the definition of an asset. In the asset realization account, you have to de-recognize the asset's cost and the asset's accumulated depreciation as it is two separate accounts. The cost less the accumulated depreciation represents carrying amount. That is then compared against a bank entry representing net proceeds to give you either a profit or loss. Please note that the bank entry, the proceeds that you compare against the carrying amount of the asset, must represent the cash price equivalent of the proceeds. It cannot include interest and please refer to a discussion on deferred settlement terms that we have discussed before. I-16 paragraph 65 deals with compensation for impairment, compensation from third parties for items of PPE that were impaired, lost or given up shall be included in profit or loss when the compensation becomes receivable. That is an accrual basis of accounting principle. Paragraph 65 to 66 dealing with compensation from third parties identifies that impairment of an asset the derecognition of an asset, compensation received from a third party, and the cost of a new item that's being purchased or constructed, all of these represent separate economic events that needs to be disclosed separately. An example will illustrate this. On 1 January 2011, a motor vehicle with a carrying amount of 150 was stolen. First economic event. The company was fully insured, consequently the insurance paid out 160000 in cash, cash on 31 January 2011, second economic event. On 1 February 2011, a new vehicle was purchased for 160 to replace the stolen one, third economic event. 31 December year end, assume all amounts or material. So in that scenario, we had three different economic events, they all three have to be disclosed separately. On 31 December 2011, the company also sold the machine with a carrying amount of 250 for 280 cash. That is considered one economic event, so you may disclose the net effect of that. The company uses a profit before tax note. Let's disclose. When you do disclosure, always put a proper name of the company, a heading notes for the year ended with a proper year end, Name of the note, profit before tax. Profit before tax include the following. There's always an income section and an expenses section. In this instance, there was the economic event of the asset being stolen. So there you would show the carrying amount of the vehicle lost due to theft. That is one economic event. You then received Proceeds from the insurance claim, another economic event, so you show the 160,000. Therefore, please note it's two separate economics, if economic events. You are not allowed to show a net amount of 10,000 Rand. You show it separately. In contrast to that, the profit on sale of the machine, which was one economic event, there you are allowed to show the net effect of profit on sale of machine 30,000 being the difference between the cash received of 280 and the carrying amount of 250,000.